Hi, I'm Melissa McMahon with Care Paravel Academy. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about planning your Ambleside online year. Um, I assume that you know enough about Ambleside Online, that you've been on the website, that you have read the FAQs, and that you know a, at least a little bit about the Charlotte Mason Method of Education and hopefully have read some other books about narration and um, just how to, how to implement the Ambleside Online curriculum. And this is just going to be the nuts and bolts of how you plan your year in 10 mostly easy steps. So make sure you hang around to the last one because the 10th step is really the most important. So we're gonna jump right in. The first thing I want you to do is to set your calendar schedule. So you need to decide when you're going to start your year. You can stick with the original um, traditional schedule of September to May, if that's what works best for you. For us, when the kids were little, I really loved starting in June. We would do the first term from June to Labor Day, the second term Labor Day to Thanksgiving, and the third term from Epiphany to Easter. And I loved that schedule. It gave us a big break during April and May when other things were super busy and the weather was nice so we could be outside and take vacations. And we were working during the summer when it was hot and kind of getting good um, routines in place before other school activities started. And having a great big break at Christmas time was just wonderful. Now my kids are older and so we're back on the school schedule. And I don't love that, but it's just where we are now. But you've got flexibility. You could start in September, you can start in January, you can start on your child's sixth birthday if you wanted to. And it's okay if your other children are in different stages. So if you, you can start week one with one child in September and week one with another child in November, it doesn't matter. It's your homeschool so you can do what you want. But first you, thing you need to do is decide what your calendar schedule is roughly going to look like, knowing that it can change, but at least get that start date, okay? So you've got your start date. Second thing you need to do is decide placement for your children. And I've made a whole other video about this a couple years ago, so I'm just going to link it. So if you haven't seen it, go see that. Decide the placement for your children. Use the tips in there and decide if they're gonna do individual years or groups, what things you might do together. But just watch that video and I'm gonna skip right past. The third thing I want you to do is go to the website and look at the years that you have chosen for your children and read them thoroughly. Okay, this is going to take some time. Make sure you also read the footnotes, very important. There's a ton of gold information in those footnotes, especially information about what books might have some objectionable material or some more mature material, especially in the older years when you're not necessarily reading aloud to them. So make sure you read thoroughly through the footnotes and that will determine if you might change out some books or flip some around, um, especially the high school years. And I'll do a whole nother video on the high school years because there's so much variability in that. But mostly I'm talking here about years one through eight. So read through those, decide which books you're keeping, which ones you might swap out, um, go to the AO forum to talk about substitutions for books. Honestly, I'm a big proponent of just doing it exactly as it's written. And our best years have been the one years that we have followed Ambleside pretty much as written, and our worst years are the ones that I have veered off the path, both for me and for my kids. So just take the take what work people have already done and um, start with that. And unless there's a big reason to switch things out, I would just encourage you just to stick with that. But read thoroughly through all of the, all the books that will be used and the footnotes coinciding with the books. So the fourth thing you're going to do is to gather your books. So you've got the schedule, you've got the book list, now you're gonna gather them. If you're planning in advance, this is a great way to shop used book sales and be looking for things for um, years down the line to be able to go ahead and buy them and purchase them and have them on hand. You might be in a crunch of time, um, so it, it, you can save a lot of money if you're able to plan ahead, like with most things. But if you're in a crunch of time, of course, Ambleside's got links to books that you can purchase new if you need to do that. Also look at what's available on Kindle and also our ebook of any kind, and also what's available from your library. Now for things that are used through the year and for a whole term, it's kind of hard to use the library for that, but free reads, we would get a lot of those from the library, just a lot easier to do. Some of the harder to find books that are out of print, um, Kindle was awesome for that, or reading an online version. Um, 
so you don't have to spend a lot of money. And really, I would just spend about $100 a year just for my oldest child. So it, it, it can be very, very economical to use it that way. So then you're going to gather the books. And that's when it gets fun because the mailman comes and you've got you've got new books to open. And it's like it's like Christmas there. Next, you're going to value to um, to arrange, pull in all the materials that you are going to need for uh, your together subjects if you've got more than one child or your riches. So that would be the artist, composer, folk song, hymns, um, poetry if you're doing that together, gathering all of that material. And that's really fun and that's also deciding what you're going to do. Now Ambleside has rotations that everybody is working on at a certain time of year. You can certainly follow that and there's a ton of great resources there and you're also doing it along with other people so it's kind of fun if other families are doing the same folk songs you are then you can show them videos from other families doing that um, but when we started in June of each year we were always ahead of the year so we would use the selections from the previous year because they weren't out yet for the Ambleside the main list so you can certainly do that too and that worked for us for many, many years. As far as choosing hymns and folk songs for many years, I just pulled from what I knew I wanted my kids to learn. Now I'm relying more on Ambleside's list for that. So again, you can look at what's there. You can substitute things that you want to substitute. It's your homeschool. You can do what you want. I would encourage you, though, to be open-minded. And you might not know this hymn, but it might become a favorite hymn or you might not even love it, but your kids do. So, um, you know, let, lay out the feast as much as you can and let those, let your children decide the things that they like and they don't like, and you'll be surprised how, how varied the opinions will be even in your own family if you do that. So you're gonna gather all those materials. Um, everything's on the Ambleside uh, site that you can just gather from there. There are lots of other places that you can get these materials to. Um, I always liked having actual CDs of the composer studies because I like to listen to them in the car and I'm just old-fashioned and I'm just not into the whole streaming thing. So I would try to buy CDs. A lot of them I already have, but some you might find at, um, at library sales. Or the thrift store when people are getting rid of their CDs. So those are the other kind of materials that you'll need to get. The artist, um, you might get printed or you can buy them already printed. Sometimes even I just had old calendars that I just used the pictures from there. So that gets into where you're deciding what you're going to study and what you're not going to study. If it's fitting in with the Ambleside um, calendar that they have chosen, great. If you want to substitute it out for something that you already have, great. The idea is that you're presenting it to your children, so don't get hung up on all those little details if you don't want to be. That is fine. Next thing you're going to do, and it's often the first thing people do, but I really don't think it should be, so I've, I've got it number six in my list, is to make your space. So a lot of times people think, I'm going to homeschool, so you, they do their daily list and they do their space. And actually, I put those further down the list. I start more globally and then work more specifically. Your space can be anything and it will change. So when mine were little, I needed a space where toddlers could be playing nearby. Don't need that much anymore. Now that they're older, they're going to their rooms for a lot of things, the older children are. But we still like, you know, some place to have some together time. So it can change year to year. It can change month to month. It can change throughout the day. You might start off in one space and then um, migrate to different spaces. So put your space together. Again, it does not have to be a big deal. It can be the kitchen table and you just move it all off when it's time for meals. Um, but figure out a good place that you can have designated as your space. It doesn't have to be a whole room. It doesn't have to be even a designated table or anything else. It can be something you're already using. It can be the floor. It can be outside. Um, we loved having a picnic table outside that we could take our school there and do that easily too. So make your space. Beautiful examples all over the internet. You can search, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, um, Pinterest worthy or Instagram perfect. It's just whatever works for you and you can um, educate your children very well on the kitchen table. 
Now, the next thing you're going to do is the weekly schedule. So you've gone through the list on Ambleside, you know what you're doing, you've got your calendar. Um, so now you're going to print out the PDF uh, or Word document, however you want to do it, from the Ambleside list. You'll make what you can edit those documents. So you edit it out however you'd like to do. And what I, we've always just printed out those lists. I've never done anything else. But for multiple students, I really like these portfolios. So you can buy them at Office Depot um, or any office supply store, but it's it's the plastic sheet protectors, but it's all bound together in one. So this has worked really well for our family. I will do it like this, and this will be our together time subjects here, which we'll work on. But then here are the PDFs for each year. So I just print them out for each child. I've made any changes if I've swapped out any books or anything else. I've made the dates that we're going to use for our for our homeschool, or recently, I don't even put dates on there. I just have week one, week two, because that gives me a little more flexibility and I don't feel like I'm behind all the time or ahead. Um, but I can print, this is for one child, um, for all the, all the subjects here. The next child is here and so forth. So I've got five kids, um, three students this year, because two are in college. But I've just always kept it in something like this. So this is my copy. My older ones, I give them a copy too so that they have that to go for, but the younger ones don't need it. That is our marching orders for each week. We know that what we're going to be reading and narrating for each week on that. Now, personally, like for um, grammar or for math, I don't write down the lessons. I write them down after the fact. That just works better for me because some weeks we might be buzzing along in math and some weeks we might need to take more time on concepts. So I don't try to predict that so much. I just do the next thing with that. But this keeps us on track for our Ambleside readings. We highlight them when they are narrated. A reading is not done until it is narrated in some form or another. So that's how we keep track of our weekly things. Now, now we're gonna to get to the daily routine. So also with that weekly routine, you've got, you've got your weekly assignments. Now you're gonna look at your schedule for your weekly routine. There might be some things that are coming up uh, periodically that you know that Wednesday morning we have dance class. So you, you need to hold that out. And so maybe you decide that Wednesday afternoons need to be a lighter subject because they're going to be tired from dance class. So put whatever lighter books, just kind of pencil them in for know that that's going to be a lighter time. If you're doing any kind of morning time or symposium, figure out what time each day that's going to be. And that can vary. For us, it varies. When mine were little, did not vary. We could do it anytime we wanted to because we were home all day. But if you've got other things going on during the week, you might have um, your together time. For us this year, it's going to be uh, morning on Mondays and after, afternoon or maybe even nighttime on Tuesdays, tea time on Wednesdays, and morning Thursdays and Fridays, Lord willing. So that's, that's our goal for that. So that will be our scheduled time. And then, like I said, also look and see what days might be more taxing for your family and kind of have that for your lighter subjects. Personally, I like to start with the harder books on Monday. So if it takes multiple readings or multiple days to read a reading, then you've got the time for that. I would not save, you know, all of the really hard things for at the end because you might run out of time for that week and just be frustrated. So kind of figure out what your week kind of looks like, but hold it loosely. Um, then <laughs> for your daily routine, um, I hold this super loosely, all right? So like I said, I've got, maybe if we've got a morning time, we know what that's going to look like. But for our daily assignments, I just use my old spiral notebooks. And this is something I read years ago on Sarah McKenzie's blog, um, and I will try to link it below too. And I just write out their assignments um, sometimes on Sunday night, but sometimes just the night before. And it takes less than two minutes for each child. I look at their schedule. I look at what they've got going on in that day. I see what needs more help and I will write it out. So for instance, this is June 29th and I've got Bible and math and spelling words 
and Birth of Britain, Age of Chivalry, and Sloan Weather in Latin. So this is my year seven, um, at many years ago, I guess. Uh, so we just have that. And then I put a little box here and it's, we mark it off. She puts a dot in it when she's read it and I put a check in it when she has narrated it. We also use this notebook for narrations. So any written narrations can go right here and also any, um, I, I like to pull the spelling words out of written narrations. So we'll put them in there. And this is just their notebook that they keep for everything. Some of my girls now prefer binders instead of spiral notebooks. That's fine. Same thing though. We just keep a list of what we're gonna do day to day, mark it off. If it doesn't get done, it goes on the next day. And then I can kind of see which days get heavier and which ones we need to lighten up. And then also, I can also see, um, make sure that we don't have a whole bunch of really hard readings on one day. We can mix it up in that as well. So that's what we do for daily schedules. Ninth tip, or ninth step in all of this is to start with a treat. So for us, I would take them shopping the week before and pick up pretty notebooks that they want. I pick up pretty pencils, whatever they might like to make it a treat to start. You can start with a literal treat with um, a nice breakfast or something the day that we start. Our tradition has always been to um, kind of get an overview of the year. And then we take for, first day of school pictures and then we meet daddy for lunch. And th that might be the day. And some, we, we've had some first day of schools like that. We, uh, last week, children were headed off to college. So we took a first day of school, which was a very soft start um, because they haven't even gotten their schedules, the younger three for their uh, school, but we, went, we wanted to have a back to school picture. So that was a very, very soft start, but we got the picture and we went to lunch with daddy and that's where the memories are made. And 10th and last and most important is hold these plans loosely. Revisit them from time to time. First, revisit what's going on in the daily if you need to mix that around. Then revisit what's going on in your weekly schedules. If um, some books are just going to take some more time, let it take more time, okay? You can spread it out more, spread out the readings as they need to be spread out. Um, if some are going really well, that's good. Maybe you can add in a few other readings that you had maybe taken out. You just need to reevaluate. I've had um, five kids go through one through four so far, and they've looked pretty much the same for one through four, but five through 12 for sure are going to look completely different for every child. So just be very aware that it can look very different even in the same family, that children are gonna to respond to different things in different ways and it, it will look different and that's okay. You're educating your particular child and you know Charlotte's first principle that children are born persons and you are living this out in the way that you plan for them and the way that you replan for them because you do need to be open to revising even this really, really beautiful schedule. So hope that helps you. I tried to do it as quickly as I could. <laughs> so I hope that that is helpful to you um, and blessings as you begin your school year. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.